Or how about it? St. Paul's opening address to the Ephesians. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavens. St. Paul certainly understood the glory of being one of us. Holy family, how we make short shrift and even butcher our prayer to and praise God. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So let us, as the world grows ever darker, as our need for prayer grows ever stronger, let us pray like we mean it when we pray. Be our Father and Hail Mary in glory be. And when I do it throughout the Holy Rosary, I'm going to teach you now a better way to pray so that you can find the oasis in the desert. It comes from Ignatian spirituality, the spirituality given down to us by God's greater servant, St. Ignatius of Loyola, the father of the Jesuits, back when they were Catholic. <laughs> Sorry, sometimes I can't help myself. <laughs> St. Ignatius gave us the spiritual exercises through which we enter into the mysteries of the Gospels as if we were there when they happened. We enter them through all our senses, through our eyes, our ears, our nose, our mouth, our touch. God gave us our senses by and through which he can speak to us and teach us about his glory revealed in his creation. So let us look at just a couple of the Mysteries of the Holy Rosary anew using Ignatian spirituality of our senses. Let us start with the joyful mysteries. One of my favorites to ponder is the third joyful mystery, the Nativity. Go there now. Just, how about this? Just, just, just thank you. Thank you. Uh, go there now. Close your eyes. Just, just close your eyes. Be there. Be there, be one of the shepherds who looked up into the night sky and saw that first one holy angel. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. And the glory of the Lord shone around in them. And they were struck with great fear. The angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I proclaim to you good news of great joy that will be for all people. For today in the city of David, a Savior has been born for you. Who is the Messiah and Lord? And this will be the sign for you. You will find an infant wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in the manger. And so Suddenly there was a multitude of the heavenly hosts with the angels, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and utter peace to those on whom his favor rests. Okay, you can open your eyes now. If any, I just learned this not that long ago, so I'm not going to presume that all of you know it. So for those of you who don't, do you know that the shepherds to whom the angels appeared were the very shepherds charged with the care of the spotless lambs that would be the Passover lambs, the perfect Passover lambs that would be sacrificed at Passover and eaten to fulfill God's command. Do you know that these Passover lambs over which they watched themselves were wrapped in swaddling clothes to protect them from any injury or cut that would impair their spotlessness. I see, I see think of swaddlingness, kind of like a flannel baby onesie. And, and I love, I got to hold one last night. I love holding babies in their little flannel onesies. That's kind of the way I thought of Jesus in the manger. 
I had no clue. I didn't know what I didn't know, and they didn't teach us. But these Passover lambs that were watched over by the shepherds themselves were wrapped in swaddling clothes to protect them from any harm so that they would stay perfect. So when the angel told these shepherds, these guardians of the Passover lambs, that they would find the Messiah in the town of Bethlehem, which means, as you know, city of bread, lying in the manger, which means to eat, and that this child would be wrapped in swaddling clothes, they understood it. Shepherd standing there before. 